Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Now the second part of our lesson is about the explanation of this qasida, of this poetry of Imam al-Busayri al-Burda, which we know, which we love to recite and is recited all the time. It is the poetry written by Sharafuddin. That is the title that was given to him, Honor of the Religion. Abu Abdullah, Muhammad ibn Sa'id, Ibn Hamad, Ibn Muhsin, Ibn Abi Sarur, Ibn Hayyan, al Sanhaji, al Busiri, al Misri. So that was his name. We normally call him al Busiri because an ascription to the place of his birth in Egypt. He was born in 608 after Hijrah. 608 after Hijrah, which means 1211 of the Christian era. 1211 passed away in 1296. Uh, Hijri 608 after Hijrah passed away in 694, some places 696 after Hijrah in Iskandaria, Egypt. Uh, his grave is... Uh, has anybody been to Alexandria in Egypt here? No? You've been... You've seen the... You've visited, right? Yeah. Okay. So you'll be in a better position to describe because I'm not visited. So uh, his grave is next to a big mosque and they have the inscriptions of the Burda and all that on the... Yes. So they are boss and beautified with the Burda. Uh, of course, I mean... People here know about him, then what about people in Egypt? Huh? He's revered in Egypt. Now, Imam al Busiri, he was from the Shaziliya Tariqah. You know Abu Hassan al Shaziri? Well known. Abu Hassan al Shaziri, he had his uh, student who was basically his Khalifa, known as Abu Abbas al Mursi. Abu Abbas al Mursi well-known Sufi saint and scholar. He was a student of Abu Hassan al-Shazili, became his Khalifa. And Abu Abbas al-Mursi, he had two students. Students. One was Ibn Atta'illah. You know the book Al-Hikam? Oh, amazing, isn't it? Amazing book, yes. One was Ibn Atta'illah and the other one was Al-Busiri. Imam Al-Busiri. What's the other one? Now, Imam Busiri, he came from a poor family. And it is reported that he started earning a living when young. And that he started, first of all, writing uh, on, uh, you know, Batu Nisan, grave stones, Shawahid uh, al-Kubur. Right, because he said nice calligraphy. You could write, khat was very nice. Then he studied religion in Cairo and it said that he studied his religion in Cairo at a mosque called Masjid Abu Zahir. When it comes to poetry, he started off by praising rulers and ministers and his poetry earned him many gifts and accolades. Towards the end of the Qasida, he, he makes a reference to this. Then, after that, he worked in the religious police. Amr Ma'roof Nahi Munkar, you know? Hisbah, they call it. Now, to, to be appointed to become the religious police, to do Amr Ma'roof and Nahi Wan Munkar, of course, you need to have fiqh knowledge. So, he had knowledge. He was qualified to do it. Then, he worked as an accounts clerk. And then, later on, of course, he was then, you know, a student of Abu Abbas al-Mursi and so on. So he was, and part of the uh, Tasawwuf legacy is love of the Prophet. One cannot say claim that, you know, he's, he wants to practice Tasawwuf, but he doesn't love the Prophet. 
Huh? And he doesn't doesn't praise the Prophet. That's not possible. That's in every Sufi chain you that's a very important pillar of the spiritual development. Attachment and love for the Prophet. Imam Busayri he wrote many poems in praise of the Prophet. Hmm? For example, like the Muhammadiyah, Al Mudariya and all so on. But as we all know, the most famous is the Burda. Qasidatul Burda. Also known as Qasidatul Burah. Burah here meaning what? For cure. Okay? Yeah. Originally, the name of the Qasidatul Burda was Al Kawakibud Durriya. Basically, the radiant illuminating stars. Fi Madhi Khairil Bariya in praise of the best of creation. Uh, why did he write uh, or the occasion upon which he wrote this poetry or what, what made him write this Qasidatul Burda? He, he was writing lots of poetry. But there was a reason why he wrote this Qasidatul Burda. He wrote this when he was afflicted with paralysis. Half body hmm, was paralyzed. So he was seeking a cure. So many of his fellow, you know, murids in his tariqah, they told him, you know, uh, you are a good poet, write poetry in praise of the Prophet and, you know, use the praise of the Prophet as a wasila. Do tawassul with it, seek the cure from the Messenger wasallam. And so he did so. And so when he wrote it, he saw the Prophet ﷺ, of course we are making it brief, perhaps you can read in some of the books. He saw the Prophet ﷺ in a dream. And the Prophet rubbed his face with his blessed hand and he cast a cloak on him, a Buddha, the cloak on, or the mantle on him. And when he woke up from that dream, he was cured. He was cured. He left his house for the mosque to do his Fajr prayer. And on the way, he was met by one of the dervishes, you know, one of the Sufis and so on. He asked for him for that Qasida. So he was shocked because he had kept it a secret. He had not told anybody. So he said to him, what Qasida are you asking from me? He said the Qasida which starts with this, 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 the opening lines of the of the Burda. The opening lines of the Burda. So this man, he told him that he had seen in his dream. That meaning he had recited those lines and the Prophet was there and the Prophet had put his Burda and he had become cured. And so he gave him the Qasida. And then this narration of this dream became very famous. Everybody was mentioning this dream. And so the, this Qasida became extremely famous. So famous that we know it is read in every corner of the world. And there are so many commentaries that have been written on this poetry. I remember, if I can remember correctly, in one of those books I read that there were 90 commentaries on it. Yes. And amongst them, these commentaries which have been written on the Burta have been written by them well-known scholars. For example, uh, Al-Imam Al-Kustullani, one of the authors of the commentary on Sahih Al-Bukhari called Irshad Al-Sari Fi Sharhi Sahih Al-Bukhari. He has written a commentary on it, Al-Anwar Al-Mudi'ah Fi Sharhi Al-Kawakib Al-Durriya. Explanation of Al-Kawakib Al-Durriya, meaning Al-Burda. Then we also have uh, this Al-Muhaddith Al-Faqih, Nuruddin Mullah Al-Ali Qari, he is a Hanafi scholar. He also has written a commentary on it. Imam Azhar Kashi and, and so many other scholars. They have written, I don't think we need to mention those names. Uh, they have all written commentaries. Amongst them, uh, Shaykh al Islam, Imam al Bajuri, the Shaykh al Azhar, who passed away in 1276. He has also written the uh, commentary on, on the Burda. And the Burda 
is divided into 10 parts. It's divided into 10 parts. The first part talks about love. It's poetry on love and longing and complains about love and passion. He starts off in the first verse by saying, Amin ta dhakuri jiranin bidi salami, mazajta dam'an jara min muqlatin bidami. Second one, Am habbati rihu min tilkai kazimatin, wa awmada al barku fi dhalmai min idami. Is it because of the remembrance of neighbors? that reside at the Salam, that you shed tears, infused with blood, that flow profusely from your eyes? Or is it because a wind has blown from the direction of Kaazima, name of a place? Or is it the flash of lightning from Idom, also name of a place? Now, who is the scholar and poet Imam al Busairi addressing? Now, it is the norm for poets who express love. And in this case, love for the Messenger of Allah وسلم, to strip a character from themselves. You know, they, they imagine another character. That character is actually themselves, from within themselves, it's their feelings. That from that feelings, they imagine a character. To strip a character from themselves with whom they have a dialogue. Expressing their fondness, fondness their perindu, their liking and love. And then they'll be reproaching it also, blaming it, admonishing it, asking questions of it, and replying to them. Actually, he's addressing his own self. The purpose of doing this is to give the illusion of a lack of those who are skilled and experienced enough to whom they can reveal the experiences of their love and longing to. Basically saying, you know, my love, you cannot understand, you're not my position. You're not able to experience. The only person who can address is myself only. Only myself can understand my love. So he said the purpose of doing so or the reason why they do so is to give the illusion of a lack of those who are skilled and experienced enough to whom they can reveal the experiences of their love and longing to. And to inform of the lack of true friends to whom they can confide about their treasures of love in the bosom. Uh, I cannot tell the secrets of my love to anybody. I cannot trust the people. I only can trust myself. So Imam al busairi is questioning now this character. Who is in reality? His own self. He's his own self. To help the reader, help us, imagine and understand the extent of his love for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is it because you remember the neighbors who reside at the Salam? The Salam, a place between Makkah and Medina, close to Kudayd. Now you travel, you can see where Kudayd is. Or is it the blowing of a wind from the direction of Kazima? Or is it the bright flash of lightning, lightning in the darkness of the night at Edom? All these are places. Now the mention of neighbors, Jiran is a metaphorical reference, metaphorical or figurative reference to lovers. For closeness gives rise to love. Closeness gives rise to love. And furthermore, the lover loves all that is close to and is associated with his beloved. Correct or not? Right? That's why we see like Anas ibn Malik, 
He said he saw the Prophet وسلم, eating dubba. You know dubba? Katola, they call it in Malay, right? The god. He said, from that day onwards, I never cease to love eating that. Yeah. Because the lover will love everything that the beloved loves. Then, he mentions that the tears have become totally infused with blood, mixed with blood. Such that they have become one. Tears and blood have become one. For which reason he uses the verb mazaja. Mazaja. Instead of khalat or mixed. Mazaja meaning totally infused. It has been mentioned that tears that are shed out of happiness are cool. Cool. Ay mata. Seju. If you are happy. While those out of sadness and grief are hot. The excessive copious flow of tears indicated by the use of the verb jara flowing meaning lots of tears instead of say sala so jara means a lot sala flow also but not that much has led to a drying of the moisture from the eyes no more tears now blood is flowing So he says, Mazajta dam an jara min muklatin bi dami. Mukla refers to both the pupil and the iris, the black and the white. While the black only, the pupil, is called hadaqa in Arabic. Hadaqa. As for the mention of mukla in the singular, he mentions only one, he doesn't mention two. Instead of the dual form, he mentions the singular form. Uh, it, this is the norm in Arabic usage. For example, in Arabic, in poetry, they say, Bakat aini wa hukka laha bukaha wa ma yugnil bukahu wa la Bakat aini, only one eye. My eye cried. So it's a norm in poetry. And it is fitting for it to cry. But neither crying nor lamenting, wailing is of any benefit. Perhaps another explanation for the use of the singular form of mukla instead of using two is that he has considered the feeling of sadness and grief and fear which accompany love upon which he sheds tears as separate from the feelings of hope and comfort that his love brings to him and upon which he experiences happiness. So he has ascribed each of one of these two states to one eye. So he's talking about now the experience of the sadness and the fear and the grief. That's one eye he's talking. He's not mentioned the other eye because in love, there is also comfort and hope. There is joy in, lo in love. There is joy and comfort and hope in love. But at the same time, Love can also bring about great sadness and grief. Like in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. How Yaqub alayhi salam grieved because he loved Yusuf alayhi salam for all his qualities. An objection has been raised as to the necessity of mentioning the flowing of tears from the eyes when it is a known fact that tears are shed by eyes only, why need to say, you know, uh, that the tears are flowing from the eyes? Where else do tears flow from anyway? The answer to this is that it is mentioned for stress. Mentioned for stress. And we have a similar usage found in the Holy Quran. In verse 38 of Surah Al-An'am. In which the mention of with its two wings, the bird, flying with its two wings, stresses, stresses the crucial role that the structure of the wings plays in the flight of birds. Okay? Janahai, he flies with its two wings. وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا طَائِرٍ يَطِيرُ بِجَنَاحَيْهِ إِلَىٰ أُمَمُنْ أَمْثَالُكُمْ There is not a creature 
or a bird that flies with its two wings, except that they are communities like unto you. Now the author is seeking a specific answer to the reason for the tears. So he asks in the second line of prose, if it is the blowing of a wind from Karvima or a flash of lightning in the darkness of the night from Edom. Edom is the name of a mountain or a valley close to Medina. Or is the reason for those excessive tears a combination of all these factors? The significance of the mention of the remembrance of neighbors is that it brings back old memories. How many people we used to love passed away? It brings back old memories. And with it, feelings of longing and sadness for those whose company one has lost. No longer see them. So if I think of the person, yeah. it brings back these feelings of love and longing and sadness. As for the blowing of the wind from Kar Vima, which is the name of a place or a watering place, a watering hole, the lover always thinks about the beautiful form and qualities of his beloved. And he imagines that the wind brings the odor of his lover to him, the smell of his lover to him. What did the Prophet Yaqub say to his sons? In verse 94 of the chapter Yusuf which we are going to touch upon. And when the cameliers had departed from Egypt, their father Yaqub said to those around him, son, I indeed sense the fragrance of Yusuf. This was, remember, when they went there to get some more food, yeah? provisions, and he kept Benjamin with him, Binyamin. Yeah? He said, I indeed sense the fragrance, the wind of Yusuf. And if you deem me not senile, you know, if you don't accuse me of being yanyo, you would believe in the truth of that which I claim. I smell this verse. There are lessons from this verse we will mention later. As for lightning in the darkness of the night, lightning. Darkness is associated with trials and light, with the removal of trials. Darkness is associated with trials and light with the removal of trials. Just like darkness is falsehood and light is guidance. Light is the removal of trials and elevation of problems. The lover also imagines that he may catch a glimpse of the dwellings of his beloved one in the streak of light. Light comes, maybe I can see. One may ask as to why Rih is used for wind in the singular. Why? Why not Riyah? When Rih is associated with punishment and retribution in the singular form. In the Quran, that seems to be the norm. This is the case with its uses in the Quran and also in the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahumma ja'alha riyahan wa la taj'alha rihan. Allah make it riyah, not rih. Riyah means winds of glad tidings and not re winds of bring punishment. The reason for this is that though love can be sweet and pleasurable, it is always accompanied by the pains of separation from one's beloved and the fear of rejection. And the fear of rejection. The benefit of the recital of these two lines of prose, the first and second in the Qasida of Imam al-Busayri, has been mentioned as follows. 
So this is like per tour, per tour, which you will not find in any of these books which you have with you. Okay. Uh, where did I get it from? I got this from uh, the explanation by Imam Labajuri, the Sheikh al-Azhar. Okay. Uh, they are also found in other explanations. The benefit of the recital of these two lines of poetry, the first two lines, is that if they are written on silk, they are written on silk, sutra, yeah? and washed with rainwater, and that water is given to an animal that is difficult to train and to subject to one's use, it would, upon drinking it, become obedient and subservient and learn quickly. You understand? Yeah. So you have a horse difficult to train. The gale, eh? the one to listen stubborn. Inshallah, if you do this, you will drink and you will become obedient and you will learn. If there's a slave who finds it difficult to learn, non Arab slave who finds it difficult to learn the Arabic language, these two lines of prose should be written on the skin of a gazelle and tied around his right upper hand, and he would speak Arabic in a short time. Now, the benefit of such things, the benefit of such things, I think Malay Pertua also, right? The same. The benefit of such things is established through experience. Without any contradiction of the belief that harm and benefit comes only with the permission of Allah. An Arabic saying says, Asirru fil kaf, la fil harf. The secret lies in the hand that writes, not the words. The secret lies in the hand that writes, not the words. We have a narration recorded in the book of prophetic narrations, Sahil Bukhari and other books, about the man who read Al Fatiha and cured a man who had been bitten by a poisonous reptile. Or insect, poisonous insect, immediately. If we try and read Fatiha, somebody got bitten by cobra, see what happens. Nothing happened, inshallah. <laughs> Another narration tells us how Umar ibn Khattab who had written the Basmalah, Bismillah, and it cured the headache of the Roman king. When he wore this, you know, on the crown, it cured his headache. So we say, it depends on who writes it. It's not the words. I think we stop here. It's 9.30. Uh -huh. So, uh, we will seek, inshallah, to expand on the, your understanding of the, of the burda. Okay? Uh, much more can be said, but it's limited. If you, if you uh, explain it from the, uh, the language and the gram gr grammatical points, there's even more to talk about. But that we will leave out, you know, because that may be difficult, uh, what you call, to understand. Okay, any, I don't think there are any questions here, it's all about love. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's a good question, where you can find gazelle skin. I've got no idea. <laughs> okay, we'll end this, uh, is there anything else? Yeah. No, otherwise we end with a dua. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيد محمد الفاتح لما أبلك والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي لا سرعتك المستقيم صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه حق قدره مقدار العظيم اللهم إنا نسألك من نعمة تمامها ومن عصمة دوامها ومن رحمة شمولها ومن عافية خصولها ومن العيش أرجده ومن عمر أسأده ومن إحسان أتم ومن الإنعام عمه ومن الفضل أعذب ومن اللطف أقرب اللهم كن لنا ولا تكن علينا اللهم اختم بالسعادة آجالنا وحقق بزيادة آمالنا وكرم بالعافية جدونا وعصالنا واجعل إلى رحمتك مسيرنا ومعالنا واسبب سجال عفك على ذنوبنا ومن علينا بإصلاح عيوبنا واجعل تكوى زادنا وفي دينك اجتهادنا وعليك توكلنا واعتمادنا اللهم ثبتنا على نهج الاستقامة وعزنا في الدنيا من موجبات الندام يوم القيامة وحفف لنا شر الأشرار وأتك ركابنا 
ورقاب آبائنا ومحاتنا يا اخواننا واخواتنا من النار برحمتك يا عزيز يا غفار يا كريم يا ستار يا عليم يا جبار يا الله يا الله يا الله يا رحم برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين يا اول الاولين يا اخر الاخرين يا ذا القوة المتين يا ارحم الراحمين يا ارحم الراحمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك ان كنا من الظالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين